These are a couple of Philips MFB 541 speakers, which are my main studio monitors while doing video work. And these are absolutely gorgeous speakers because they use high technology in order to overcome one of the most basic limitations of small speakers. Because these have an accelerometer in the woofer, which enables them to compensate away the frequency response of the cabinet, which means that this tiny 8 inch woofer in its even smaller 4.5 litre cabinet will go flat down to 35 hertz with distortion levels similar to that of a subwoofer 20 times their size, which I find to be absolutely fantastic. And as such, I really want to bring the most out of these speakers, because while the woofer and the emotional feedback system do provide really stunning performance, they are cursed with the worst dome tweeters ever manufactured. In other words, the Philips AD161. These tweeters are notorious for being used in cheap hi-fi speakers in Europe uh, during the 80s and 70s and they just perform horribly in every sense of the word and they are an absolute drag to try and equalize eight. In fact, you can't even do that properly because the frequency response is so ripply and disgusting. So what I've done is I've ordered a couple of CS drivers to replace them with uh, doing a bit of a resto mod theme. Now I do know that it's sacrilege to modify vintage audio equipment, but I think these are worth bringing to the maximum performance level because the woofer just sounds so bloody well good. They are by far the best monitors I've heard for their size if you don't need to complement with a subwoofer. So. Uh, here we are in the basement, in the workshop, and we're about to begin the operation. So there are going to be some mechanical limitations to how we can fit these drivers, and we are going to have to modify them indeed, because they are somewhat larger than the original tweeters, and they won't quite fit the hole. Now I could cut out the hole, but that, that's going too far even for me, so uh, I'm just going to grind away at my brand new 40 euro tweeters just to get the size down, because as you can see they won't either fit the hole nor the grill. Uh, but uh, if we can get the diameter of the driver down a bit and drill some new mounting holes as well as grind the contacts down ever so slightly, I think these are going to fit quite well. So the tweeters in question are CS27 TFF HO831-06 and I chose these quite randomly uh, due to their price performance and their very flat frequency response up to and uh, just above 20 kilohertz, uh, which uh, should bring these speakers to a, a quite acceptable standard. Uh, I, you don't get waterfall plots or stuff like that, but uh, we really I don't have a budget for getting some 200 euro speakers for these anyway. Ah, and there we go. There are our brand new Philips compatible tweeters. It took about uh, maybe three hours to get them to this state. And uh, while they're not going to win any beauty awards at all, I am dying to wire these up and see how they sound. So with no further ado, Let's fix up some gaskets and get them installed into the box. So while making these, I actually had to pretty much sacrifice one of the original tweeters because weirdly, these boxes do not have the same tweeter mount. One has a four screw mount, the other has a three screw mount. And while the four screw mount works perfectly with a four screw mount on the new ones, the old one doesn't. So I needed to get some kind of a template for figuring out how to actually mount the tweeter into the cabinet without drilling new holes, which indeed is impossible because there's a special plastic insert where the screw holes are. So there's no way of redoing the screw holes, but it really is no big loss since those tweeters are garbage anyway. I'm going to keep them around just for completeness sake since they are original to the speakers, but performance wise, I am not shedding any tears.
Ah, uh, and there we go. I, of course, couldn't help myself but to bring them upstairs and give them a test lesson in my treated room. And uh, while they do sound a lot better than they did when they had the original terrible Philips domes, uh, there is something lacking because I did take a quick and dirty microphone measurement of the modified speakers and it is very lacking in high frequencies. Indeed, they seem to be almost gone at 16 kilohertz. So I ventured to the service manual in order to try and figure out why that is because these new tweeters uh, really should be flat to 20 kilohertz and beyond. And if we have a look at the schematic, there is a very clear reason why. Because uh, Philips clearly knew that the tweeters they were putting in them were absolutely horrid. So they took some steps to remedy that. Uh, one of the most notable issues with the AD0161 dome tweeter is that it has a giant frequency response lump, uh, many decibels at about 7 kilohertz. And what Philips have done here in order to mask that is to just put a low pass filter over the tweeter. Uh, there's a choke, 0.5 millihenries, a cap and a resistor in parallel with it, uh, which is basically just uh, becoming a rather soft uh, low pass filter starting at about 5 kilohertz and pretty much evening the horrible 7 kilohertz lump out at the expense of killing all the highs beyond. Uh, it's not a big deal since these weren't originally intended for studio use. They're a bookshelf speaker for home use. And, you know, your normal old lady who would buy a Philips branded speaker rather than uh, your audio nerd who buys a JBL or Yamaha or something wouldn't know the difference. So we need to get inside, mess around and remove these components in order to achieve a flat frequency response throughout the entire audible spectrum. I just hope the amplifier isn't going to reveal its hidden noisiness when we do. And of course, w while we're in Cyberspeak, I'm also going to give it a bit of a tune-up and uh, I want to give a bit of a test to adjusting the amount of acoustic feedback fed back into the amplifier. Uh, because at the current stage, these speakers do start to roll off slightly below 100 hertz or so. Uh, they uh, have plenty of oomph which you can apply if you just uh, add an equalizer. But uh, it would be very nice if we could uh, defeat the requirement of having an equalizer by just having the emotional feedback do it all. Uh, because the emotional feedback clearly is active at very low frequencies. But there's just some kind of high pass filter on the woofer to stop it exploding with your normal user. Because uh, if we adjust these to be truly flat down to the rated 35 hertz, well, they are not going to be very loud ever again, which would have resulted in Philips having huge amounts of uh, speakers returned with blown woofers. Now, I'm a pro, kind of. And I'm not going to blow my speakers, I hope. So I want to try and challenge that. So in order to better utilize the emotional feedback system, I tried to set up my own calibration procedure. The original Philips manual specifies that you should use a signal of 125 hertz and adjust the woofer to a set uh, output level. And uh, that will leave you with uh, perhaps a 30% input of the uh, acoustic feedback signal. Uh, what I did was I used a much lower frequency and a much higher voltage, meaning that it would take more acoustic feedback in order to provide the desired uh, level. And uh, it actually did work very well, uh, but I had to re uh, roll it back. Uh, I was able to achieve a damn near flat frequency response down to 40 hertz or so without any uh, equalization applied to the speakers but it was at the cost of noise floor because while the acoustic feedback system is very cool and a fantastic technology uh, it is somewhat noisy 
the accelerometer is of a PSO type and it has a very high impedance. It's prone to picking up 50 Hz hum from the air and if you turn the acoustic feedback up too high you will actually start to get a microphonic effect. In other words, the speaker will start uh, putting out the sounds it hears in the room, uh, which is not very productive because most of the sound in my room is a 50 Hz hum coming from transformers. Uh, in the end, I couldn't raise the emotional feedback more than maybe 10 or 15 percent over the original level without achieving uh, an unacceptably high noise floor. Uh, but uh, still, that is a bit better than it was from the factory and it was actually a lot better than these speakers have been in quite a while because I did notice that one of them had a considerably less acoustic feedback than the other. I'm not sure how I'd managed to mess that up the last time I calibrated them but uh, rest assured they are now in perfect spec and ever so slightly better than they were originally. So with the acoustic calibration done and the low pass filter across the tweeter removed, I took a couple of very close range microphone measurements across the speakers and uh, these are the graphs I got. Now these are looking absolutely horrendous and that's for a couple of reasons. I took the measurements right up against the tweeter and in my untreated basement so this is not at all an accurate representation of the performance of the speakers they perform. Uh, considerably better uh, when measured more properly. Well, at least I sincerely hope so. They don't sound as bad as well look here. Uh, the reason for taking these measurements is I wanted to confirm that both speakers sound the same because they are active and they have the acoustic feedback which could potentially cause severe uh, imbalance between the speakers. They could sound very differently. But uh, in this picture I have taken a graph of one in blue and one in red and as you can see they are overlapping perfectly which is making me a very happy camper because that means both my tweeters sound pretty much the same, the amplifiers of the speakers have the same gain and the acoustic feedback has damn near the same level of effect meaning I'm not going to have to apply any differential equal equalization in order to compensate for the speakers which is very very good because that means the speakers are in spec and we are ready to bring them upstairs and do the final install. So I use these speakers with my uh, Luxman L120A uh, integrated amplifier and my JVC SEA M9 graphic equalizer as well as a microphone and a pink noise generator in order to calibrate the actual room compensated frequency response. So for starters this is what the frequency response of the speakers themselves with no equalization at all looked like and it's pretty flat uh, except we have a massive roll of in the low end which uh, I've been aware of. However thankfully the speakers love the tone controls on my Luxman amplifier because if I just set the bass turnover frequency to 150 Hz and max that out well look at that we end up at a perfect response down to the lowest frequency we really want to push these to. So that solves a huge issue. And it means that I don't have to have the EQ on to get a decent low range response out of this, something which is of lots of value to me, because eh, I don't like having things on unless I really need them. However, we do have some small discrepancies in the frequency response uh, as well, which uh, can't be corrected by the tone controls on the receiver. So I just spent about an hour with the microphone and EQ and I measured them up and this is the final frequency response and that is looking pretty good. Uh, we're more or less within 3 decibels across the entire audible range. You can see the left speaker plotted in red is performing quite a bit better than the right one and that's because of the room modes in this room. The left one shoved into a corner whereas the right one's sitting right in the middle of a room. Uh, obviously the left one's going to have far superior low range performance. If we have a look at the equalizer curves I've applied, you can very well see that. Uh, I have, and rather rudely for the speaker, pushed the 32 hertz uh, range uh, up to plus 5 decibels, meaning that the right one's kind of being compensated 
quite a bit for its low range performance, but it does bring it to a reasonable level as well. Certainly not a bad level for a couple of 40 year old speakers in this basic setup and this poorly treated a room. And well, that's pretty much it. That's how I've turned a couple of uh, Philips MFB 541 speakers from a kind of decent sounding, uh, I guess, home speaker from the 70s into what I really would call a properly well performing set of studio monitors, which, well, you're going to be hearing a lot of since I do all my sound corrections on them. If this mic sounds good, well, then you know I've succeeded. If it sounds like garbage, then I've clearly done something horribly wrong. So with that, I'm just going to leave you with a bit of a sample of how they sound. Now, this is just going to be my speech mic pointed at one of the speakers, so your mileage may vary. Perhaps you don't have a flight assistant to enjoy them at either. But hey, it would be a bit rude of me to just leave you with not even an example. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Cheerio.